Have you ever wondered how TypeScript handles the intrinsic types inside of the TypeScript compiler? In this video, we will figure out exactly that. We will dive deep into the code of the TypeScript compiler, but we will also create our own intrinsic type in there, then build the TypeScript compiler locally and use it in VS Code for our own project. Let's get started. So let's first figure out what differences are between an intrinsic type and the normal built-in TypeScript type. So let's say we have this type test here and we want to make an object read only. So we have a read only type here and we pass our object in here, which has a property, which is of type string like this. Now, when we check what the result here is, we can see now that this type is read only. So when we hover over this type, we can see here, this is a real type. So we loop over all the keys of our object and we make all the properties read only. But let's see what happens when we use an intrinsic type. So let's say we have this test two here and we use capitalize and we pass hello in there. Now we can see here the result is also correct. We get an uppercase hello here. Now when we hover over this, we can see here this is intrinsic instead. So this means that we don't see what happens because this intrinsic tells us there is something happening inside of the TypeScript compiler. So to figure out what happens when we use this intrinsic type, we have to fork and clone the TypeScript GitHub repository. So let's switch over to the TypeScript repository. So we can see here, I'm in the TypeScript repository I forked and cloned from GitHub. Now there are many files in there, but the important ones for our case are in the source directory here. Now in here, we can see we have a compiler folder and this is also what's interesting for us because in there are also many files, but the interesting one is the checkerts file. So let's open this. Now we can see here, this is a huge file. When I scroll down, we can see that there are over 50,000 lines of code in there because this is one of the main files TypeScript uses to check your TypeScript code. Now let's see where the capitalize is in there. So when we search for capitalize, we already found something here, intrinsic type kind. We can see here we have uppercase, lowercase, capitalize, uncapitalize, and no infer. So these are all the types which are intrinsic when we check the types in our DTS file. So let's see where this capitalize here is used. So when we click on this, we can see that we only have three places where this is used. So let's click on the first one. We can see here that we have a mapping from string to this intrinsic type kind. So when we use, for example, uppercase, then we map this to intrinsic type kind uppercase and so on. Now, the next thing is where it gets interesting. We can see here we have this apply string mapping. So let's go in there. And as we can see here, this is a real function which takes a symbol and a string and it then checks if this symbol we pass in here is an intrinsic type kind of type uppercase, lowercase, and so on. And then we can see here the real type manipulation happens. So what happens here is the string here gets passed in and the string is the thing which we pass to our capitalize function. So for example, this string type, which in our case is hello. And we can then see, we just make a char at zero to uppercase. So we uppercase the first letter and then we add the remaining part to it. Now, as you can see, this is the real difference between this intrinsic type and the normal type, which we have, for example, for read only. Because this intrinsic type, what this does is it really triggers something in the TypeScript compiler to manipulate the type itself inside of the compiler and not just uses a type construct like in the read only where it loops over the types itself. So this is something which is done inside of the compiler. So because of that, just for fun, let's add our own intrinsic type. So how can we do this? Well, the first thing what we do is let's go into this intrinsic type kind here. Let's click on this and we add another enum value. So let's add a snake case in there. Now let's see where we have to implement this. Now, of course, here in this intrinsic type kinds. So we use a snake case here and we have our intrinsic type kind here like this. And then we have our snake case. Now let's see where else we, for example, have this capitalize. So we click on this again. We can see here we have this in our capitalize in here where we already added our snake case. Then we have this capitalize in here. So let's add this in here too. So what we do is we add another case and we say intrinsic type kind dot snake case. And now what we will do is we will create a to snake case function and then call it. So let's create this here. So we have a new function here and let's call this to snake 
case and we pass it our string here. Now we will create our string here to an array. So we will say array dot from, we pass our string in there and now we will map over this. We have our map here and we will have our character and the index we are currently at. And then we will say, well, if C dot to uppercase is the same as our current character, this means that we have an uppercase character. Now, in this case, we check if the index we are currently at is at index zero, because then we don't want to add an underscore before our character. So we say if this index is zero, then in this case, we have an empty string. Otherwise, we have an underscore here and we add just our C dot to lowercase to it. Now, if this is not the case, just return C itself, because when the character is no uppercase character, then we don't want to change anything. So the only thing which is missing now is we have to use join here and we join it with an empty string like this. Now we can use this in our snake case here. So we say return to snake case, and then we pass our string like this. Now the first part is done. So let's see where we also have to add it. So we go back into our intrinsic type kind and let's check where we also have to use it. So we have our capitalize here. The first part is already done with the snake case. So the second one is where we use template strings. So we also have to implement it there. So this is a little bit more complicated, but it's also doable. So what we will do here is we will have our case intrinsic type kind snake case here. And then we can just copy the existing one and we will paste this in here like this. Now we can see here that it checks for when the text at position zero in the array is empty, then just return the text. Otherwise just take the first element of our text array and then convert it. We can see here we have this char at zero and so on. Now what we can do because we have created a function is we can just say to snake case here, wrap this and remove everything after text zero like this and just close it. And now we have achieved the same as with capitalize and uncapitalize. Now let's save this. And this is everything we need to do in the checker TS file. Now, the last thing we need to do is we also need to enable it in our DTS file. So let's go back into our folder and let's now see where the capitalized type is stored. So when we search for capitalize in here. We can see we have many different types in there, but the important ones here are in the ES5 DTS file. And we can see here, we have this capitalized with the intrinsic type. So we need to add another type in here. So let's just copy this. And instead of uncapitalized, of course, we call this snake case like this. Now we can see here currently we get an error because this intrinsic type here can only be used to declare compiler provided intrinsic types. Now, why is this? Well, because currently we're using the normal TypeScript compiler and not the one we've created ourselves. So we will change this right now. Let's go back into our folder structure here and let's close everything. And let's see what's in the package JSON in here. We can see here we have different scripts and these make it really easy to build your own TypeScript compiler. We have this build compiler here and this calls Herbie local. You need to have Herbie installed locally. You can check in the contributing file how to install it. And then we can just run it like this. We can just say npm run build compiler. Let's run this. And we can see here, this now builds everything we need. So it's already done. It took six seconds. Now the important part is don't run it with tests because the test of course currently will fail because this new type is not implemented in all the test cases they have. And they have a huge test base. Now what happened is let's scroll up here and let's see we have this build folder and this build local here contains now your own compiled TypeScript compiler. Now we can see here we have all the lib files in here. We have everything in here when we scroll down. We can even see that we have the TSC JS file. This is the TypeScript compiler, which you can run, but how can you use it now in your own project? Well, this is really easy in VS code. So let's go back into our test project. So we are back in here. So when I now change this, for example, and I say I have here, hello world like this, and I change this here to snake case, we can see TypeScript does not know what this snake case is because we are not using the TypeScript compiler we built ourselves. So we have to do this. So what we can do is we can change the TypeScript compiler version. So how can we do this? Well, let's open the preferences here and then our settings. Let's click on this. And we are now in our settings file. Now we can click here and switch to the JSON view. And when we click on this, you now have your little JSON file in here. Now, what we need to do is we need to set the path to our local build TypeScript version. So what is this path? So let's go back into the TypeScript repository. And we will now go up there again in the build local folder. And we just right click and we say copy path. Now we have this path copied in our clipboard and we can use it in our settings. So let's switch back to our settings JSON. 
So let's create a new entry and we create an entry which is called typescript.tsdk. Now the value of this is the path to our locally built TypeScript compiler. Now when we save this, we can see nothing really changed. So let's go back into our index.ts file. So we can see nothing really changed. But what we now can do is we can open command palette and we can say TypeScript version and we can say select TypeScript version here. So when we click on this, we can now see use VS Code's version and this is the one we added in our settings file. So when we click on this, we can see that the type is now snake cased. So as you can see, this is the intrinsic type we've created in our ES5 DTS file. So we can see our updated TypeScript compiler really works. So by just changing some elements in the TypeScript compiler, we now have created our own intrinsic type. So to just recapitulate a little bit, what we did is we just forked and cloned the TypeScript GitHub repository, updated the checker TS file and the definition file and added the intrinsic type in there. And then we just built it and linked it to our VS code. And now we can have our own type. Types. Now, of course, don't do that and patch your TypeScript compiler locally. I just wanted to show you how it could be done. And I hope you now have a better understanding how TypeScript handles these intrinsic types internally. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date for the newest TypeScript stuff. And also let me know in the comments what kind of videos you're interested to see in the future. See you in the next one. Bye.